no. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take an early look at the Jada Toys Universal Monsters Wave 1. And oh, I've been wanting to lay hands upon these plastic playthings. One, because they're six inch scaled, super articulated Universal Monsters. That's all my favorite words. But more than that, I'm interested in Jada Toys' jump into the six inch super articulated action figure ring. I'm curious. Sure, we have lines that have been going on and I do those reviews on this channel all the time, but something new, something interesting, something exciting, something I hadn't messed with before. I, I, when they reached out and said, hey, would you talk it? Yes, I didn't even let them finish the sentence. Yes, I'm in. For wave one, we have, oh, 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 oh. we have Frankenstein's monster, we have Bride of Frankenstein. There's a little Dracula. And then there is Creature from the Black Lagoon. The packaging is interesting. It has a full window showing you everything you get in here, but it's kind of freaking me out how much space there is between the figure and the front. It's not a bad thing. We don't have parts of figure rubbing against the front window, but at the same time, that's, that's a lot of air. They may already have plans for a wave two and beyond where it's a wider figure or it'll take up more space but at the same time, keeping the same size packaging throughout. We'll jump to this side first. I know where that's backwards from what we usually do, but change is good. There's some neat artwork of Frankenstein's monster, the bride, the creature. All four figures have the same back, just a graphic showing all the figures beside each other, giving you a nice idea that they are keeping relative scale in mind. The best is the other side though, this artwork for each character, giving you an idea of like the control art or something or what they based these figures on. <sighs> on the top, windows to allow light in. If this was hanging on a peg, sitting on a shelf, we have the light, even if you're not here. Ooh, mood lighting. On the bottom, your warnings, your logos, your UPC, but let's start getting these open and we're gonna start with Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster. I know, I get it. And I can already see it in the package, but it's interesting that they use this tray piece over it to hold all the accessories in and the figure itself but it has a cutout <laughs> to give you a good look at like the chest and the face i'm hoping that will eliminate any twist ties or the bands that we usually have to cut off hopefully it's just held in here with the tray and that's exactly what's going on here oh and jada you got me intrigued i've been messing around with this for a little bit and i have my nitpicks we'll get to those but overall this is not a bad first outing. I think I mentioned it during the weekly where all I had to go on was the pictures themselves, but having this in hand now and seeing the articulation and how it works, there's somebody on this team that knows action figures. First up, the overall proportions, how it's kind of blocky, the squared shoulders coming down, how the pants lay, the big blocky bulky boots. But you zoom in on that and there's texture to all the cloth pieces here. Well, I say cloth, but you know what I mean. This is all plastic. But the different textures between the suit jacket and then the shirt underneath, and they even put the wrinkles here at the bottom where the shirt's tucked in. The pants texture kind of matches that, but it is slightly different too. Some wrinkles to the pants, it's not overdone. It's not going crazy. It's not, well, I'd almost call it semi-animated, but realistic at the same time. It kind of straddles that line. The boots are fairly plain. It doesn't need laces or anything like that. And even then, again, little bit of detail. Hand sculpt has finger wrinkles under the knuckles and the inside of the palm. I just noticed that the pins in the green jacket arms are brown, and that's because the pants are brown, so I'm guessing those were in the same mold. Some buttons for the pants. Is there pockets or anything around on the back? Nope, just franken butt. For the head, it has the raised cranium. It has the little metal sections right here. The scar work, a little cut with some red in it. The eyes have that closed lid look. <laughs> kind of sleepy, but kind of scary at the same time. And it's not like photorealistic. Again, skewing that line between cartoon and artwork and realistic. But looking at the shading and how it's dotted, there is some kind of print technology going on here, I think. Or that's just the paint application. There is shading to some of the lower spots just to kind of make the eyes look more sunk back and to bring out some of the little details. The bolts in the neck painted silver. And there may be some shading here and there, but it's very sparse all over the body. Well, I don't know. Is that shading down inside the wrinkles or is that actual shadow from my lights that may be paint speaking of paint where it's painted black on the shirt and the neck being the same piece it's rough around the collar there i do have some discoloration right here but the more i look at it i don't know if that's heat 
or if that's the actual base color of the plastic and it has a big overspray of shadow on it. But I don't see every one of those having that. Or, well, I can't make a guess. This is the only one I've seen. But I open up the jacket. Oh, yeah, that is the base green. Much brighter than the outside. So <laughs> it's not paint shadow. It's a whole paint. I guess you can see it on the elbows there, too. So there is paint. And opening up the jacket, it is a bit stiff, especially around the shoulders. This moves out of the way, which allows for articulation movement it may be glued somewhere in here holding it on or it may just be stiff because of the curve speaking of the shoulders they are kind of tight and the pin in the bicep swivel may be slightly thin so you don't want to grab it here and go moving and rotating you want to try to grab it as close to the shoulder as possible what do we have in the midsection that is a big old dumbbell joint that's not super easy to do it takes a little bit of force to pop apart but again overall <laughs> look at frankenstein's monster going over articulation there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck and look up looks down look at that tilt and i think it would have more tilt but it's running into the neck bolts right there and right there swivel all around hinge of the shoulder comes up to about right there swivels all the way around you gotta kind of go out for the coat swivel at the bicep double elbow comes oh my god see swivel at the wrist and then hinge in and out if you go too far it starts to pull out but it's supposed to mid torso gets fairly nice hula hoop rotates there and also rotates at the waist what's going on at the hips here ball coming out to the hip comes forward goes back goes most of the way out swivel at the thigh double knee oh so oh yeah <laughs> hinge at the ankle goes back goes forward forward facing pin for rocker for accessories besides this head it does pop off and you can pop on the alternate <laughs> just a lot of emotion it still has those kind of closed eyes but the teeth showing <laughs> the, the way it's it, it, i like this but with all the same nice paint apps the silver up here the red on this scar <laughs> then besides the two just relaxed hands again those pull out and then the other two plug in and they're more kind of uh, then there's also two sets of shackles with real chain between them and they're two different lengths they could have easily just made it to where you pop the hand off and then put them on the wrist and put them on but they went the extra mile and made them openable there's a hinge right there so that's easy enough to just bloop. yeah that totally works next up let's take a look at dracula and this one's going to be interesting because it's a suit body and it's something we can directly compare to with other lines because of you know suit bodies did i mention suit bodies be our guest be our guest okay with dracula getting him out of the package let's address the elephant in the room and that is the cape when you have it folded and shoved behind the shoulder like this where it's kind of just behind him this is probably my favorite look but you can see the big heavy elastic band coming around the front and i'd like this side of the collar to be down like this i may have to wet it or water it down and try to reshape it when you bring the cape out it's nice and red on the inside but there is a heavy seam right here and when you bring it down well okay <laughs> that's not bad either it kind of engulfs them and again that's just a different look if you try to do anything else it kind of gets in the way well okay let's try this well, that's not shabby it all comes down to a little thick right here there's a lot of seam work to hold everything together right at the top and it it gets in the way sometimes and sometimes it doesn't you gotta work around with it and besides that elastic band there are two pegs right here that are holding the cape on if you want to take the cape off i haven't done this yet let's see yeah that pulls out and that one pulls out and then really that head pops off and you can take the cape off if you don't want it and that'll let us look at the body and everything underneath i think those may have had some glue on them but i it, there wasn't any force to pull them out and when i put them back in they're a tight fit they're not going to fall out so i don't know <laughs> maybe it's not meant to come off but i did it and under that you have a you know a fancy suit it's a separate piece like frankenstein it is a little bit stiff i can't well i just put the pin back in so of course something's holding it on but again i think yeah that's pinned in or glued down or something have a little bit of handkerchief here in the pocket the gold medallion see the little sculpted detail down in there then the red collar coming down with the bow tie on top of that a white collar sticking out there's buttons on the shirt and then buttons on the vest too and looking at the whole thing really the messiest paint i have is this one black splotch on the side of his face here i'm almost positive there isn't shade paint on top of this this is all just straight matte black for the suit have the tails hanging down in the back coming down to the legs and again 
it's a little smooth just has faint wrinkles running down the leg all the way down to the front unlike frank there is some slight detail to the shoes here you can see it up here and then this line running across and they changed the sheen to be a shinier black than the rest of the suit they painted the shirt poking out of the sleeves of the jacket but again we get up to the head and there's your Dracula. The purple around the eyes and the lips is a nice contrast against the pale skin. It makes them stand out, but look sunken. It gives it kind of that undead look. The eyes may be slightly crooked, but he's also, well, there we go. He's looking slightly left. His left, not your left. And then jet black for the hair, which I feel it's appropriate. Kind of the same thing as Frankenstein's monster. The cut across the bicep, the pin is slightly small. So if you go cranking below that, you may get a little stress, so grab it close to the shoulder. But there's an angle to the cut. It's not straight across. I don't know if that was done because of the cut of the jacket or something. And it's not bad. When you rotate it, it does its thing. It functions as it should. It's just throwing me off a little bit. And then proportion-wise, it's, it's a regular dude in suit. But I like how your eye is drawn up to the face and especially the chest there's a lot of detail there articulation wise what's going on here another dumbbell joint this one seems taller though with that looks up slightly better down tilt oh i love it swivel in fact he's looking all over the place hinge of the shoulder comes up to about right there rotates around swivel at the bicep double elbow oh pfft. that's all the way swivel at the wrist hinge in and out it looks like they didn't want to break up this nice detail on the vest and the chest so there is a ball joint at the waist under that because it goes up in there it moves, but it is restricted a bit. Not bad hula hoop, though. Ball coming out to the hip, comes up to 90. Back, out. <laughs> That's better than some spider rats. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, look at that. Blah, 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 blah. Hinge of the ankle goes back. The pants come down too far. It goes forward, and then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there is this candelabra. Ugh. There is this candelabra. It's some kind of snake or. Or I, I don't know what it is. I thought at first that this snapped around an arm, but it's actually just the feet to hold it up if you want to set it on something. There's also this bat that I did not realize actually clips around the finger sticking out. Children of the night. But nice little sculpt. Looks like it's either just landed or about to take off. Yeah, it's a bat. Besides using it as the bat holder, I guess you could also use this as the He's hypnotizing you or something. You cannot resist me. And then there's this grip hand that I think is for the candle. But besides those, again, those pop out. Plug in the more monster type hands. Which go nicely with the alternate head. With this, he's just full on going for the jugular. The teeth are bared. They look kind of big and Halloween-y, but... I, it's, you know, Universal Monsters Dracula. Eyes opened wide. There's not as much of a... Widow's Peak, I think, on the hair. But this still completely works. If this was coming at you in the dark, just bleh, You'd be scared. Don't lie. Next up, let's open up The Bride of Frankenstein. Can you go through the top? I guess it doesn't matter. It's just a box. You guys know I was excited about getting my hands on these to see how the articulation is, to how they move, how they pose. But out of the four, I was most curious about this one. The Bride of Frankenstein, in the promotional images, we could see the head, we could see the arms, we could see that there was some movement, but the dress covered it up. So, yes, we will get to it, but first, it is just a piece of cloth, but it does kind of do what you want it to do and it's not because of wires or anything like that it has a heaviness to it that you can wrinkle up make it look a little bit more natural like if you have her standing up you can bring here and then you can just kind of form fit it all the way down and bunch it around her feet and it's definitely not bad for a company's first outing when it comes to a cloth dress but if you're wanting to take it off or replace it or something you can pop the head and there is a Velcro strap running down the back. And you can already see it. They went ahead and sculpted all the wrap detail all over the body. And they articulated the hell out of it. Put the head back on, get you a look at the whole thing together. Not only that, this was covered up, but they went ahead and painted all of that too, or gave the whole thing a wash. On the back too. And I like the shape of this. I mean, it's a female form, mummy wrapped. I kind of want Jada to make all my female action figures now. The skin tone runs down onto the neck and painted all the way to where the wraps start. But looking closer, all the wraps have the detail. You can see it's coming across here and going across there and it's wrapped and and bunched up in places and the texture to the wraps themselves it's just really well done from 
the tip of her toes to the top of her head. Even on the hands, they went ahead and did the wrap detail going around on the inside too. It's just crazy. Again, they did not have to do this. The shade work in places, uh, yeah, it's covered up. You don't see it in the package. They didn't show this <laughs> when they solicited the figures. The elbows are hinge and swivel, but they do come up past 90. And when you get your hands on them, if it doesn't go that far, it's because they're turned backwards. If it's there, you don't quite make 90. You have to turn the forearm around and then ba boom comes up. Look at the movement. I just noticed no actual feet sculpt. They're wrapped all the way down to the toes, even though I pointed out the toes a minute ago. But now that I'm really looking, there's a natural wrap like here and it goes back and around. Yeah, that's cool. At the face, I, it's the shadows kind of bouncing off of it. Sometimes she looks slightly cross-eyed like this eye is looking to the inside, but then in other angles, not so much. You can see the little detail work to the eyelashes. The eyebrows look fantastic. The red of the lips stands out against all the rest of this gray and kind of off brown. The sculpt of the hair, how it waves and just flows up to here, and then the white painted stripes on the sides. Oh my. Yeah, this is my favorite so far. I like Dracula. I like Frankenstein, but the bride is winning so far. Looking at articulation, again, dumbbell joint up at the top of the neck. There's a little up, little down, again with the tilt. And then of course side to side. Hinge at the shoulder comes up past 90, rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to there and then back and forth. Swivel at the wrist, hinge in and out. Again, dumbbell joint, ball joint, something. Oh, it's a dumbbell joint, so you can kind of shift side to side too if you want some more range. Tilt, 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 tilt. Ball coming out to the hip gets you up to there. Back, not so much. Out, oh, <laughs> that's so good. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh, easy. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, she has these two, well, kind of relaxed, kind of splayed out hands. And then there's two, what I feel like are very specific hands, and I've never seen Bride of Frankenstein, so I don't know if these reference something specific. This kind of feels like a thwip hand, but also kind of a grip hand with the two fingers sticking up. But then there's this hand kind of pointing but it has some loose wrap hanging off the back of the fingers. I, again, it looks cool, but I don't know exactly what it means or what it's doing. Of course, the head pops off, and then there's this alternate screaming bride head. And usually with screaming mouths, you have the teeth, the tongue, and everything, but look how far that goes back up in there. I mean, the teeth are even sculpted to have the back of the teeth. And then the same nice details to the eyes, some shade work, eyelashes, eyebrows. It looks like the same kind of angled off to the side slightly, but then it doesn't in a lot of other angles. <laughs> yeah. There's also these two diorama pieces. There's a ball rod going down to a ground piece. They're both sculpted a little bit different. Then they have actual chains hanging off of them along with a couple of ribbons. But the ring on top does have an open spot, so I wouldn't pull too hard on this. I haven't had that problem yet <laughs> unless i keep doing stuff like this and then finally we're going to take a look at the creature from the black lagoon i had forgotten about this look at this i feel like the creature from the black lagoon was the one that jada toys went okay boys let's show them what we can do it has all this sea creature fish type stuff on top of it but the way they've taken some of that design work and integrated it into articulation or the paint work and just Oh, they knock this one out of the park. Just look at the detail and the bumpies and the texture running down. It gets a little smooth here, but I think it's supposed to, like it's a plate of some kind. Coming down to here and the way it overhangs on the hips, you get on the back, there's fins that split right at the ass. It runs down both, well, at the top of the legs and then up the spine. There's a fin working around on the back of the arms, the same thing, you know, it's just cutting through the ocean or the lagoon, I guess you could say. Fins, the flippers, the inside, it has little just detail and running out to here. The scale-like details, well, start up here, but then run down the leg and down to the knees and then more fins on the back of the leg and then the feet, the big old feet. Not only do they look monstrous, they look creature-ish. They also give a good base for standing. Even when you lean them, well, well, not too far, of course, physics being what they are, but even leaning forward. It's not only that, it's the paintwork. How many colors are going on here? Probably not as much as I'm thinking, but the way they used them with the yellow on top of a darker green on top of the base green plastic and the way they laid it all out in stripes and patterns and shading, Oh, <laughs> it's so good. The claws painted on, 
the yellow dry brush on top of the fins on the back, which is probably the same yellow as up here, but they used the colors they had just so well. Nicely applied all over the body. Because then they brought in some pink for the open mouth that's on this head, and I just noticed they didn't paint. It looks like there's some fangs or something in there, and it's just that pink color. Those fish-like eyes just peering out at you. Coming in with the brown, working down to the dark green, the yellow on top of that as the, the fins run down the head. They just they went for it. You know what, now that I'm holding it back from the camera a little bit, it seems like this green is slightly different from this green, even though it looks like one piece coming down. They put, well, I don't know, is that a dumbbell joint? And then a ball joint down here? No, that's a dumbbell joint because that's moving like this. But this also does like this. Is there two dumbbell joints in that torso? This bottom one is slightly loose. It kind of glides around and if you shake it, yeah, it's going to move. But it does stay in position when you pose it. And even though there's two dumbbell joints, there's not a lot of crunch on the back. It only goes to there because the fins kind of hit. But look at that. Some tilt to the side, some tilt to the side. You can shift, you can go around. But I really like how they work the thigh swivel into being hidden kind of behind the scaliness of the leg. That's just brilliant. Keeping with articulation, there is a ooh, big ball dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Up, down. Not as much tilt as the rest, but still a little. Rotation. Another thing, when you get to the shoulder, there's kind of a shoulder pad sticking out. So it kind of gets in the way of rotation going around but you can get it. Hinge at the shoulder comes up past 90. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Somebody there loves double elbows. Swivel at the wrist. Hinge in and out. Again, I already talked about the torso. Dumbbell joint, dumbbell joint. You can get quite a bit of hula hoop. Ball coming out to the hip. Comes up. Goes back. Out. Not as much, but because of the body coming down. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, besides, look at that. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, the creature comes with two splayed out swimming flippers. And then you can pull the left out and replace it with kind of a trigger finger grippy hand. That's to hold the spear gun. Pretty much cast all in this slightly shiny silver gray plastic little black paint here and here. I thought it was going to be rubbery, but no, it's it's fairly stiff. Then there's this old hand. There, <laughs> everything's decayed away, just leaving the finger bones and then kind of the wrist. And there's an alternate closed mouth head. Essentially just the same details, just mouth shut. Then if you want to, you know, capture the creature or something, there is this cloth net. There he is! Whew. Oh, nope, missed. Get him! Ha <laughs> ha! There's a stretch to it too, if you want to string it between things or just have it wrapped around them or something. Oh no! And I also love, love, love that they kept a relative scale between the figures. These all look fantastic together. Frankenstein stands at about six and three quarter inches tall. The creature is a little over six and a half. Dracula up to the top of his hair is six and a quarter. And then Bride is six inches to the top of her hair. To the top of her skull, I'm guessing, would be about five and seven sixteenths. Frankenstein's monster stands about the same size as the Mezco 112th Collective. And then it's absolutely dwarfed by the NECA version. But that's seven inch scale. It's supposed to be big. Still looks appropriately large with other 112 scale lines like Hasbro Star Wars Black Series or Marvel Legends. Same goes for Dracula. Fits right in with the Marvel Legends Morbius or, well, it's shorter than the 112 Collective Nosferatu, but that's also a. Bleh. But to give you a better idea, here's Dracula with a couple of suit bodies from Marvel Legends. There's Coulson and then Nick Fury. Larger than Coulson, shorter than Fury, but wider. So again, it should fit right in with your Marvel Legends display if you wanted to put this Dracula there. The Bride of Frankenstein comes in a little bit shorter than the Marvel Legends Dark Star and even the Mafex Catwoman, but proportionately, the thickness of the arms, it works. And then for the creature from the Black Lagoon, he is taller than your standard Bucky Cat body in Marvel Legends and looks like he'd give Namor a run for his money. So at the end of the day, I've got myself one hell of a start to a monster squad. And before I get accused of being too overly positive, yes, the cloth goods do need a little bit more work. I feel like the material's right. They just need some tweaking. They're, they seem to almost be there, but not quite. But a hell of a first outing, you gotta admit that. And then just a few of the joints are a little too loose for comfort. And I don't mean loosey-goosey where they're just flopping around. They're just a bit smooth. You've messed with action figures. You know what I'm talking about. But otherwise, I cannot believe how good these are. And that's not saying anything about Jaded Toys. I'm just unfamiliar with their product. These are the first ones that jump out in front of me in my lane. And I'm just pulling over, letting them in, and telling them we're in for the long haul. Here we go. <laughs> just out of the blue, these drop. 
And it seems like Jada Toys is wanting to do more six inch stuff. They got the General Mills, Count Chocula, and Frankenberry solicited right now. Those look fantastic. I'm hoping we see more Universal Monsters because these these should be out here in the next few months. Uh, the links to the pre-orders are in the description. But hopefully these sell gangbusters and they're well received by the community and that'll just net us more because these will fit in with my pre-existing collection. I have mostly 112th scale, I have mostly super articulated, and these are just generic enough, and I don't mean generic in a bad way, I mean just generic that they will fit into those different aesthetics, those different collections. These capture the creatures perfectly, but not any one rendition of the creatures, if that makes any sense. I'm all in, and that's not just because they sent me these review samples. I'm all in because happy hands, happy collection. You know, if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Did I even mention the price point for $24.99? You're getting all this detail and all this articulation. Kinda hit it out of the park on their first try. Well, I think they did something before this, but this is my first jump in this pool. To me, totally worth it. And Again, I don't know how many times I can say this. I want more. Give me more.